YouTube, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. My name is Cole Whip, and today we are talking about one of the biggest challenges facing solo players. With the tier three zone containing most of the lobby each and every game that you play, contracts can be hard to come by for the solo player. And I understand not everyone wants to join up with random. So today we are talking about the MVP for solo players. We're going to get into that after a quick word from this video's paid sponsor, Messy Modding. They're a Call of Duty service company. They'll go in and unlock camos for you, including Interstellar and Borealis. They have pre-made accounts, nuke services, schematics, and more. If this is your thing, go in and check them out. There is a link in the description down below. And we are headed straight in to the Season 1 Dark Aether. Now, while we're loading into this Dark Aether, we need to welcome aboard P.S. Chong to the Cole Whip Army. He is the latest member of this channel. Thank you so much for joining us. If you too would like to know how you could become a member of the Cole Whip Army and get a number of pretty cool perks that go along with it, just go ahead and click that join button down below. All the information and it'll be there for you. It's a great way to show love and support for the channel. Thank you again, P.S. for joining the Cole Whip Army. Let's get to the gameplay. So what are we talking about today? The MVP for the solo player? Well, it is the Scorcher. And I'm gonna show you the best strategy through the first season one Dark Aether to get the most Scorchers that you can possibly get. We're gonna start off this run by Scorchering up. I'm gonna go check the third stop of the Escort to see if there is a turret circuit that spawned there. There's not always one, and there is one there in this run, so that is awesome. If there isn't one there, I will always check the third extractor stop right over here to the left and see if there's one there. Those would be my two priority places to use the turret circuit. I'm always going to use it on the escort if it's there on the third stop of the escort. Otherwise, you can use it on one of the first two stops of the escort if it's not in either of those first two locations. The next thing you're going to do is grab this key off of that desk right where the extractor, or not the extractor, excuse me right where the acv comes in now you always want to start this dark ether run by doing the escort contract and the main reason for that is you need to clear up the inventory space so you have room to stow items that you get in reward rifts plus like the keys that we are going to collect along the way now i always start with this i bring in six monkey bombs and two casimirs and one turret circuit that is what i typically bring in if i can bring in a sentry gun i'll bring in a sentry gun i don't really find the juggernaut to be all that useful for this solo run through the regular sigil we're gonna go ahead we're gonna use the striker nine in this game i'm gonna throw that build up on screen for you so you can check it out for yourself if you would like to honestly it's not been all that bad throughout this run it has held its own not the best gun in the world but if you want to try it out for yourself you certainly can this strategy I have been working on, I have been playing this dozens and dozens and dozens and probably hundreds of times through this Dark Aether, and I use this strategy to go solo through here all of the time by myself. Now, if I have sentry guns, which I have two of them this game, I even have two extra Casimirs. We got a little bit lucky in the tier three zone. I'm going to try not to use those right now. We can use them later down the road. Um, but for the main meat of the strategy here, I want you to see with what I would typically bring in just using the monkey bombs and two Casimirs. Um, we, like I said, we do have one extra sentry gun here, so I'm going to put one facing front and back. If I only had one, I would leave it facing the rear. That is where you need to focus your attention is on the zombies coming up from the back when you're running the solo. If they're coming up really from the sides or the front and the ACV is moving, they're not really going to get damaged. Now we're going to go ahead. As soon as the ACV stops, throw that monkey bomb up the street. Now I've had some comments of people say, hey, throw it in to where they get hit by that laser and it'll kill more of them. There's a specific reason that I throw it further up the street and that is so because this monkey bomb is going to blow up before the ACV starts moving again, which you'll see. And as long as you have it up of the street, then the zombies are further away and you'll be able to start running them over again rather than being right up on top of you, ready to cause damage on you again. So that's why I always throw it up the street. And again, while you're moving, just focus on the back. You need to focus on any bosses that might be out in front of the ACV, like the Manglers and the Mimics, Disciples. Those things can do some damage to the ACV because the ACV will not run them over. But otherwise, generally speaking, just focus on the rear of the ACV. Now, as you approach the ACV stomping at the second contract to get your monkey bomb ready, you're going to want to toss this down the street pretty much as soon as you stop and that laser's about to kick out throw that down jump down in this building down here and grab the second key 
Come back up to the top of the street, get your next monkey bomb ready. As soon as that explodes, chuck it out. As you can see, this is keeping all of the zombies off of the ACV. Go ahead and equip your next two monkey bombs to get them ready for the third stop. But that one, we are going to have a turret circuit for, so it's going to run a little bit differently than it typically would. And then again, just focus on the rear of the ACV as you start moving again and headed off to the third stop. Now, I do recommend an energy mine, and I recommend saving it for when you're in a pinch like this, when there's just too many zombies to fight off. You'll have your energy mine in order to just knock them aside. Now that we're coming up to the third one here, as we get close, I'm going to throw my monkey bomb a little bit early so we have time to activate this sentry turret century the century turret turret circuit whatever use our turret circuit board and go ahead and activate that and just kind of let that do its thing we probably won't need to use any more monkey bombs or casimirs sometimes the turret isn't really going to get all of the zombies because they can't focus in all areas so just keep an eye on the acv when you have that turret circuit going if you did not have that you're just going to use the same double monkey bomb strategy that you used at the first two stops but in that case you would then need to use one of your casimirs as you oh no <laughs> and we just went down yikes but you would need to use one of your casimirs after your second monkey bomb explodes because there's that little bit of gap in time before the rocket takes off from the ACV and you're going to need a little bit of coverage there. Now, I usually don't check the reward. Now, there's two rooms that we're going to check as soon as you finish this escort contract. This is the first one. You kind of run up that ramp and it's right there. Now, I'm going to show you right now where to go get that key for that room. It is right down right off the side here inside this little window and sitting on this table is a nice shiny little key that will unlock that room we just looked at this is also a locked room up here okay i did not mean to do that this is the south bedroom i'm going to take you down and i'm going to show you where to get the key for the south bedroom it is just right down the street down here nice and easy it's kind of float off oh yeah uh, okay i almost I almost made that look pretty. I almost made that look pretty. But it's right here next to this car on the ground. Easy peasy. One great thing about that south bedroom is it always spawns a nuke inside of there. So that's a, it's a great thing if you went ahead and got it. Maybe you didn't have death perception. Now we already know there's not a wonder weapon in here because we have death perception. And we would see it if there was a wonder weapon. There's not, but we got a nuke nonetheless. We'll go ahead and stop and check the reward rift on our way over here. What do we got? A self-revive dog bone elder sigil. Okay, perfectly fine. Now we're going to go check this. Now we already know it's a VR 11 or a ray gun because of the size of the wonder weapon case. The two smaller ones are going to be ray guns and VR 11s. The two larger, more elongated cases are going to be your wonder wafts and your scorchers. And of course, we're looking for scorchers because this is the best thing for the solo player to have. To compete inside the tier three zone you need scorchers now and it's got a two-day cooldown so you need to earn some and yeah you can get some from mega abominations and reward rifts and things like that you can definitely get those inside a game but we're also going to grab this insta kill right here and then just head right on up i'm going to do one quick burst with the scorcher here and that should kill off pretty much anything there to where we can just go ahead and overload this first extractor nice and simple and we'll scorch her off to the next one and we're just going to land right up on the rooftop over here and we're just going to throw down our energy mine just like so and then go ahead and overload this extractor nice and simple and then a little quick scorcher burst here to get over to this rock to where we get a full power that'll give us back our energy mine again and then we'll head on over to this third stop where we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to throw down our energy mine just like so and just overload the extractor. Don't get too caught up and worried about everything that's going on around you. You can't always fight everything. Sometimes the best way is just not fighting it and just making your way through it. So inside of here, we don't really have much in there. We'll take that extra selfie. You're going to come off to the right hand side over here, right where this little floating truck jump over this side this is another locked room that we're going to check open these doors it would always be in this cell right there if there was one now there's nothing 
but we can unlock the door next to it which has the insta kill so of course we'll take that we'll head right on over through this archway and then we'll drop over the side here and we will grab the contract for the outlast all right and we'll just use our insta kill here just take out a few of these zombies that are on the street don't pay them too much attention your goal is just to get out of here we got the insta kill so that makes it either otherwise just run you're gonna come on over here you're gonna take this repel right up to the top sometimes there's a zombie or two to me oh my there's there's quite a few waiting for us on the other side of this door that's okay we will take them out with the striker go ahead and activate the pnd nice and simple there is a locked room inside of here which i will show you as soon as we are done with this contract all right we had plenty of extra equipment that was nice and simple and we've finished this one up and we get a dog bone out of here so not the greatest rewards for us and so far nothing from the locked rooms really other than that vr11 we need to make an inventory space you're going to jump out the back and fall down this well and on the box to the right hand side is the key to unlock the room that is locked inside of the outlast contract room Come back up the stairs just go right on over to it go ahead and unlock it and there we have a ray gun inside of there of course we're not going to take that we don't use the ray guns and then we just have one more locked room to check and as you with the kind of the strategy that i use you're gathering the keys and checking the rooms along the way and it really helps to just kind of speed things along it makes things a little easier and you don't have to go back at the end and try to find all the keys again and run around the map and risk dying anything like that you can kind of do it all as you go and looks like we got another vr11 inside of that locked room now that key there that was the very first key that we grabbed and that's, that's pretty much it so i mean no scorchers on this run so leave it to cole whip to make a video on how to get a whole bunch of scorchers and not get a scorcher but anyway that's the strategy you're going to use to get the most scorchers i usually always always have at least one in my bag i don't always use a scorcher every single run because you're just not going to find that many but one of my new recommendations with the increased stash size is to go ahead and craft your items as soon as you have them available that way every game that you're playing you're working toward pulling down that schematic even faster so yeah try to keep one in your bag in case there's a very special run that you want to do but otherwise if you keep running the season one dark ether more and more you're gonna find there's times i go in here and i can find four sometimes five a lot of times at least one scorcher but of course as you've seen in this gameplay that's not every time it's certainly not guaranteed but there are wonder weapons in almost every single run that I've played. I very seldom have played a run through this dark ether when there have been absolutely no wonder weapons in any of the locked rooms. And it doesn't really matter between the elder sigil and the regular sigil as far as getting the wonder weapons from the locked rooms inside of here. But yeah, that's where I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm going to finish fighting this mega abomination. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you coming out, and my name is Cole Quip, and I'm out.